My name is Cyril Pennarts. I'm professor of cognitive and systems neuroscience at the University of Amsterdam. In the European flagship Human Brain Project, we take on the challenge of modeling object perception and recognition. Our starting point is that the brain cannot see objects in our external world directly, because sensory information must always pass the sensor organs and nerves before it can enter the brain. The brain does not receive a ready-made copy of our external reality, but must construct its own representation of it by processes of guessing, prediction and learning. The challenge we face today is to combine these so-called predictive coding models of perception with the dynamics and neuronal circuitry characteristic of the cortex. To tease out whether predictive coding is a realistic model of perception, we need to examine if it can also simulate biophysically detailed behavior of cells in the cortex with its waves and oscillations of electrical activity. This is also key to understanding how the brain generates consciousness because conscious experience is regarded as large-scale, internally generated representation of the world and our body. To make these integrated cognitive and dynamic simulations happen, we collaborate with many other scientists and technologists working on the research infrastructure of the Human Brain Project, eBrains. eBrains consists of a network of supercomputers located throughout Europe, plus software tools, data analyses, atlases and brain-like computer chips. In our case, we use supercomputers and software to scale up the number of neurons to achieve realistic simulations of the brain as well as perception and cognition. These simulations reach from the micro level of neurons and synapses via local networks to the macro level of systems of multiple brain areas, yielding this wonderful breathtaking feat of brain function that we call perception. Hello, I'm Kwang Jun Lee, a PhD candidate at the University of Amsterdam. As Professor Penners mentioned, Evidence has accumulated to suggest that the brain uses an internal model of our external reality to make inferences about the causes of what comes through sensory organs and nerves. One of the leading theories in this regard is predictive coding. We're making models of predictive coding more realistic by introducing spiking neurons instead of more artificial units for computation. Here is our predictive coding model with three model brain areas overlaid on the visual cortex from V1 to V3. It postulates that the brain constantly generates best guesses or predictions about incoming sensory inputs using its internal model, comparing them to actual sensory inputs and sending back the difference or prediction error to update its internal model. However, the novelty of my project lies in our effort to bring predictive coding models of perception closer to the realm of neurobiology. We use realistic neural models that communicate via sending electrical impulses across synapses and Hebbian learning, which is a self-organizing form of learning according to which synapses change their strength to update the internal model. So what can we do with it? What component of perception can it mediate? Now to test whether the model can effectively generate an internal model for visual perception, we train the model on an image dataset of handwritten digits using eBrain supercomputers. Once the network is trained multiple times with many, many samples, it can successfully infer causes of images it has never seen before. In the bottom layer, in the form of image reconstruction, as you can see here, we see handwritten digits. And in the higher layers, their representations are visible, although it's not recognizable as digits. Now, my colleagues will tell you how such a model can be implemented in the brain at a more cellular microcircuit level or a more functional level to perform higher cognitive tasks. My name is Giulia Morani, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Amsterdam. My current research, which is part of the Human Brain Project, consists of building a model of the cortical column of the primary visual area of the brain, V1. My model is building an important bridge between cellular models of cortical columns and perceptual function. We want to include biological realistic feature in our model, and this is why we are using experimental data to constrain it, such as to adopt the strength of connection between different neurons type that scientists were able to estimate. The cortex of our brain has a layered or laminar structure. We can distinguish six different layers, 
as you can see here, represented in different colors. Our model captures this structure and includes different types of neurons that are found in the cortex. In each layer, for example, we have excitatory neurons, which increase the activity of the neurons they are connected to, and different types of inhibitory neurons, which decrease the activity of other neurons. Our model includes three different groups of inhibitory neurons, with their own morphological and functional roles, to explore their distinct contributions to perception and cognition. Here we can show you our model in action. When a neuron is activated and sends signals to the others, the dot representing the neuron is briefly expanding. As you see, many neurons from different groups are active at the same time and they interact with each other. With this model, we can approximate the activity level of each group of neurons and compare it with experimental data. Our next main aim is to apply predictive coding principle to this model. Hello, my name is Matthias Bruchlacher and I'm a PhD student at the University of Amsterdam, also working on the Human Brain Project. Many tasks our brain is solving effortlessly are in fact quite complicated when inspected more closely. An especially impressive feat is our ability to continue perceiving the same object and viewing it from different angles. As the apple moves, the light pattern that falls on our retina moves with it and activates a completely different set of photoreceptors. How then are we still able to perceive it as the same apple and are able to make the right choices? To investigate how robust object recognition can arise by learning to correctly predict moving objects, I'm training predictive coding networks on sequences of digits moving through the visual field. Let me show you what happens in the network. Here you can see the activity of neurons in different areas of the network. On the retina, the input image moves from one side to the other, causing rapid changes in neuronal activity. Bright pixels represent active neurons. As we move up from lower to higher areas of the trained network, the activity patterns become more and more stable until, in the last area, the same set of neurons keeps on representing the number 5, irrespective of its position. In this project, we successfully showed that objects can be invariantly represented through predictive coding of moving stimuli. But what other tasks can the brain solve by making and improving predictions? We hope to give some answers to this question in the upcoming years. My name is Jorge Mejías and I am Assistant Professor of Computational Neuroscience at the University of Amsterdam. As we just saw, our team develops different computational models of sensory predictions and object recognition. However, our ultimate goal is to be able to integrate the knowledge we gain with each of these models. Once again, what happens in our brain when we perceive an object? If we look at individual neurons, we will find them talking to each other using electrical impulses in a noisy and erratic way. However, if we look instead at how large brain regions influence each other, we might see rhythmic act electrical activity mediating communication. In other words, we find a different set of rules and dynamics depending on the scale we observe. To understand how our brains perceive the world, we need to pay attention to these different scales and bring them together. Using eBrains facilities, our goal is to do exactly this by combining our biologically detailed models with our perceptual and cognitive models into a single framework. We hope then to understand perception from a unique perspective and gain insight in cognitive aspects like categorization of stimuli, semantic memory, and active sensing. In the future, our work will be useful not only to better understand perception and sensory predictions, but also to gain insights in how sensory predictions are impaired in brain disorders, such as autism or schizophrenia, and also to apply those principles to improve the design of neuromorphic chips and robotic applications.